We are used to seeing images of refugees on our TV screens during times of wars and natural disasters. But what happens to these people after the camera crews have left? When it comes to refugees, the world's attention seems to be focused on Afghanistan. But there are millions of refugees all over the world, like here in Guinea, home to tens of thousands of Sierra Leoneans and Liberians who fled fighting in their countries. But the world seemed to have forgotten about them until a report earlier this year made the world stand up and take notice. Two months ago, the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, reported that aid workers in West Africa were demanding sex in return for the food aid they were supposed to give. That's how the baby of 14-year-old Maria came to be fathered. Me living bang bang for Gata and Ovin Gata. Say if he let me say I would do, he say like if I'm not in the I say I would do something. He say I would feed you. So they would they they now get the letter. Although they wrote the report, UNHCR said they were shocked by what they discovered. We do know that there is a lot of exploitation going on outside of the camps. We do know that sometimes it happens within the refugee population, but we had not suspected that it was happening with the aid workers. The UNHCR might be shocked by the report, but none of the refugees I met were. They explained that it all comes down to supply and demand. Their monthly food rations often run out within 20 days, leaving them desperate. So they all eat pass urare because who don't know fit for use you pass you go need don't for lie he give you money for let he able live for let he survive with you begin there. She is somebody who is looking after eight kids and the bottom line is she is somebody of dignity somebody who wants to maintain her respect eight kids with the supply that she's getting is just not enough so at the end of the day she has to prostitute she has to sell her body she has no choice it was becoming clear that food is the currency in the camp and the aid workers many of whom are refugees themselves who control that food hold enormous power as a result Two days before the next food distribution, the UN hold a meeting with refugee leaders to discuss the food situation and this month's ration. It is not only me. I've walked around the camp asking individual people that really most of them have gone out of food. We cannot provide you with all your needs that we know. Yeah? But that will not prevent us from telling whoever is willing to help that there is a need, the food is not enough. But this is what we have. But things are about to get even worse. The World Food Programme, responsible for getting food into the camps, has bad news for the refugees. Okay, uh, please your attention. Their supply ship has been diverted to Afghanistan, leaving the refugees here short. At this present moment, I repeat, I'm sorry, we don't have oil. Oil is vital. Without it, how can they cook their food? This month, instead of the oil, they are to be given extra sugar, not the easiest thing to cook with. This is the supply that refugees here are going to live on for this month. This is going to be the daily ration. Bolgo, beans, soya, sugar and salt. It's not a lot. And worse, there's going to be no oil this month. So some of them would have to trade some of these for oil. They also need fuel to cook and books to send their kids to school. They need clothes, so they'll have to sell some of these. And when you take away some of these, refugees are left with little or nothing. And as a result, young girls here have no choice but to sell the only thing they have left, their bodies. Mato knows the economics of the camp only too well. She was 17 years old when an aid worker first approached her. We found her preparing the last of her rations for herself and the five-year-old son, fathered by the aid worker. That's an old car now. They uh, man then grab them, go and I will not be to take supply again. So the man said he wants me. He help me, he give me a car. So we go there for take the supply from that car. Don't tell me, I will go to school. So that's the man this man begin for love. That's not, not going 
done there. We begin for love me at this Maya. So I take better for one more. We say, hey, not to me. <laughs> Distribution day. The hungry crowds queue up with their ration cards. They are greeted with more bad news. Not only will there be no cooking oil in their ration, they are told there is also no maize. This news does not go down well with the refugees. The angry crowd rush to where the food is. The French aid agency in charge of distribution was ready to call it a day. No, 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 no. I'm going. I'm going. You have to solve I'm the going. problem today. You have to solve the problem today. This is Premier Urgence's first contract for distributing food. But already, Charlotte has little sympathy with the refugees' behavior. So actually, they are never happy. <laughs> Whatever we change, they are never happy. So, you know, that's their main uh, occupation, they complain. A refugee has been hit by one of the rocks. They try to take him to hospital, but it's not medical aid he wants. Charlotte remains defiant. Are they going to get the supply today at all? My whole staff is totally stressed. Some were crying. I don't, I don't want to distribute. I come back tomorrow if the thing settles down and if people are more quiet, if we can but, arrange something. But the point is they're saying, I mean, the ration has been reduced and um, it's not likely that it's going to stop if they are not assured that they're going to get all the usual ingredients. If they don't accept it, I don't come back. So they. Anyway, at the end, eventually they will have to accept it because they have no choice. I have no choice. But Charlotte discovers that there is one choice left to the refugees. If they are not given the food, they can always try to take it. Charlotte desperately calls for help, but too late. I was witnessing the result of the desperation that dominated the camp. <laughs> Tensions in the camp were now so high that the army was called in. First, they removed the barricades the refugees had hastily put up, and then they escorted the aid agencies safely off the camp. Back at the food depot, those who lost out in the riot are left to pick up the scraps. Once again, it's the vulnerable who suffered as the food was taken by the young and strong. It's now one hour after food distribution was meant to happen. No one here is surprised that this riot took place this morning. There's confusion all over the place. Nobody knows what's going to happen now. But one thing we know for certain, there's going to be no food distribution today. I went to visit Mato after the riot. Like most people in the camp, she missed out in the scramble for food. And I found her resorting to cooking leaves she picked in the nearby bush. She tells me that without food or other essential supplies, women and girls in the camp will have to continue to sleep with the only people they feel can help them the aid workers. They are making the or doing they want now. Let me show you now today. Like today now, so you see what happened, I get that ball. Today now, we not get supply. Tomorrow, if supply not, how come? 
if we can we can do that one. That ain't making we doing that thing. We not doing the we not doing the with our heart, but hungry can make it. You do that one. If you're hungry, I'll let you do it. So is more food the answer? More food would be very helpful. Uh, more food would be very helpful in the sense that refugee women we speak to admit that should they have more food, their lives would have been much better. They would not trade their bodies for food. But there is division amongst the aid agencies here. Those who are responsible for bringing the food into the camp see things differently. I don't agree with the fact that uh, food is a major issue. Yeah, yeah. It, it could eventually be increased, uh, but it wouldn't change much. I would uh, rather see what are the needs of the beneficiaries and give them what they need instead of bringing in food and then let them exchange the food to, 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 to buy other uh, material items than eat in the households. So the refugees are having to swap some of their meager food ration for other vital supplies that they are not giving like wood needed for cooking. Those who can't swap food for it and won't sell their bodies for it must venture outside the camp to get it. But with the forest full of gangs of young men, this is highly dangerous, as this girl found out. Just yesterday, she was attacked here. The man jumped on her, brought her deep into the forest. She was shouting for help, and then he took out a knife. No, yeah and force her to the ground here. Mm. Put inside my clothes, it's here. It's here, it was there, oh, now they don't pay me, now go on. If they don't pay me, now they mass, mass me, they mass pay me, but they beat me, they kick me, they take speak, they beat me back. Well, that me, myself, girl, will cry and I alone. One of the recommendations in the report was for more protection officers to look after the vulnerable. Two months on, there are just two such officers looking after 50,000 refugees in the camps. But the biggest help, say UNHCR, would be more food. But there's little sign that donors will give any more. It's now three days after the riot and there's still been no food distribution. The result? More hunger, more anger and more desperation. And the one thing I've learned in my time here in the camp is that desperate people are forced to do desperate things. In response to the report, UNHCR is now drafting a code of conduct which will attempt to ban the abuse of power and sexual exploitation by aid workers. They hope it will be adopted by all aid agencies. But the feeling in the camp is that it will take more than words to stop young girls giving their bodies in return for aid. Because I know nobody will help me. If you say they help me, Soria Samura for Trevanda, Guinea. For the National, I'm Soria Samura in Kisidugu, Guinea. For the magazine, I'm Soria Samura in Kisidugu, Guinea. Soria Samura for foreign correspondent, Guinea.